Hey, everyone, uh, I'm sending out a tweet about this very thing right now that I should have uh, posted or thought about before this. But nonetheless, uh, that's what I'm going to do right now. So uh, you're going to bear with me as I ramble and do this with Bumblebees and Spicy and Jack. Okay. Yes. There we go. Hey, everyone, welcome to Sagas of the Shimmering Seas. This is the hidden tomb of Akarut. And, uh, well, we already killed Akarut. So now we're just sort of exploring the tomb and dealing with other problems. Problems of people that Akarut had working for them and all that good stuff. Uh, and I think it's it's going pretty well. Uh, so let's just jump right into it and just get back into it. I don't remember anything because I have the length of memory of a goldfish and it's been longer than a week since we last played. So uh, I remember very little. Um, but I've been reliably informed by my players that we are inside a room talking to the skeleton family. I'm trying to figure out what's going on with them. So, Skeleton D, she seems friendly, um, and she's talking to you guys, and she's been sort of pushing what would you call a narrative of, like, curiosity um, about who you are and where you're coming from and what's all going on and what does it all mean and does it mean anything and what could it mean? Celia, it looks like you want to raise your hand and ask a question, but this is not school. Uh, uh, she mentioned that um, her brother was Skeleton B. Mm. That did come out. And we need to be sending Stone, I think, to mm -hmm. give her a chance to talk to Skeleton B. Oh, that's a great idea. Did you actually do that? We thought about it, I think. <laughs> I'm cool. not sure whether it actually happened, though. I think we did. I'm pretty sure we did. Yeah. Wow. And okay. I did... think... mm -hmm. what they said. <laughs> they stopped like um verbally or like yeah. Uh we we stopped keeping up with it. So to speak. Fair enough. Um, okay. Well let's say that she has now had a conversation with Skeleton B. And Skeleton B has had a conversation with Skeleton D. And, um, yeah, I mean, it was a familial conversation, sort of. They had that sort of vibe of family vibes. Uh, I would say that uh, Skeleton B seems slightly, well, let's see. Did anyone listen in on the conversation? I would listen in. <laughs> yeah, you want to roll an insight check? Let's get these dice rolls going, you know? Don't we've got dice? Got that one. <laughs> Never mind, I noticed nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, they're the most affectionate and loving family ever. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. They really care deeply about each other. Um, the fact that they share the same blood really makes a difference. Oh, wait, they don't. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, it's, I, I don't think you get much from reading the conversation. They seem polite. Are there any other doors apart from the one we came through in this room? Nope, just the doors and the giant mandala of uh, death. A giant mandala of death? Yeah, leaning against the back wall, there's the giant mandala of death. The mandala that was lowered. I don't know if I'm listening. <laughs> Oh wait, no. Uh, I think what he's talking about is. Uh, oh wait, no. That's that's the mural. Um, yeah. Huh. Yeah. Wait, is it? Is this? Like it's off the wall, though. It's like a. It, it's it's like a. Um, it's almost like a relief, except that it's not on the wall. It's okay, like a big so the, disc which has a mural on it. Of, that's um, the same thing as the mandala. Um. Yeah. I mean, it's got it's got uh, elements of design that are similar to mandala. Oh, but it's it's not the same object, is what I'm saying. Oh, it is the same object, yes. Okay, yeah, all right, yeah. So he he's just talking about like the uh, platform thing at the back, I think. Yeah. 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 Um, let's see. Oh yeah, I I think I inspected it, but I didn't see anything. If I vaguely remember, but yeah. Double check. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'll, I'll go for it again. 
Sure, sure, sure. Uh, can I have a look as well and see whether it's associated to any religion? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll say it's definitively yeah. religious iconography, um, but the, it's not a religion that you're necessarily familiar with. Why am I not allowing you to roll? Because there's no way for you to be familiar with this religion. Why would I say that? Because there is no chance that you would ever have learned anything about a religion that had never left this room. Um, I will allow you to roll a um, perception check, uh, and I will allow either of you to roll it, and I will allow that person to roll it at advantage because the other person is helping. Uh, what you got, Celia? I got some. I've got a key. All right. <laughs> Go ahead and roll. Okay. Fifteen. <laughs> Oof, I should have rolled. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, you should roll. <laughs> Yeah, so the whole thing is, like, made out to be, like, a, um, what would I say? Some people think highly of themselves. In this case, the person thinking highly of themselves is Thoxies. And this whole mural is, like, his attempt to deify himself. To look as right. if he was godlike. And so, you know. That's that's all going on there. Hmm? This room. No. That's almost impressive. Can I ask one of the skeletons in the room? Um What is Thoxies to you? Uh pardon? Uh, what is Thoxy's to you? Is he your like, the life creator? Giver? Are you familiar with him? Is he is he close to you guys, or does he keep his distance? I mean, less familiar than we are to each other, but more familiar than literally any other person. That's a fair assessment. <laughs> we see him all the time, really. Um, he definitely... I mean, I guess he hasn't been here in about a hundred years or so. But, you know... Um, yeah, we see him all the time. Does he bring you things? Or do you, like, give him things when he comes? W what would we give him? Is that something that you do? I don't know, I was just wondering, I guess, why he comes. Does he come to talk to you guys, or...? Oh, oh, um, I mean, occasionally he'll talk to us, but usually it's more talking to himself. Um, but, uh, no, 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 he comes and he takes things from us. Things like what things? Oh, um, uh, and, and Dee sort of looks around and she says, Uh, E, E, come over here. And E comes over, and E... Is like a is a um, goblinoid skeleton, sort of, and uh, hobbles over. You can see that like a um, couple of feet bones are missing. And uh, E comes over, and D looks at E and says, "Hey, uh, could you show their could you show them uh, that weird growth?" Uh, sure, sure, sure. And uh, D like grabs by the head and turns him around. And uh, D points and points at this uh, spot on, on E's back. And you see this like weird yellow fungus thing uh, growing in the cracks in, uh, in E's spine. Uh, does that grow slowly when he's not here or does that grow? What is that? <laughs> Oh, I uh, don't rightly know. No one's ever told me. Um, uh, we we call it yellow. Uh, could I touch it against anything that I've seen fungus-wise? Sure, yeah. What do you want to do? Um, just to possibly identify if it has any similar effects to things that I've made in the past or mm. seen. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I love that idea. Why, yeah, why don't you, um, 
So yeah, uh, what so what are you doing? Um, I think I'll take a sample and then see if I can't, uh, like you know, uh, I, you know, it. I would love to uh, just figure out what exactly like a magical, because obviously there's magic in the D and D world. I would love to see what a alchemy set, because like you know that there has to be like arcane fire of different like types because you want to test it against like you know oh does this make the fire brighter or whatever you know like but you I should it, absolutely design this yeah that's that's what i was saying like I, should, I would you should design this i'm sorry but you should i, I would love that that'd be so cool but um yeah I, i'd say like i you know um test it against elements test mm -hmm. it against like different sorts of arcane um, see if it has anything to do with that. See yeah. if it's more lifelike. See if it's more death-like. Absolutely. Uh, I love this idea. I think it's a great idea. Um, Serial, can you roll for me? Uh, this is going to be your alchemy tests skit and with uh, wisdom. Okay. <laughs> okay, what is happening today? I'm concerned. Like that, we had twenty new year comes for you. I am here to slaughter you. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, um. it, 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 all right, hold up, Asma. Can you roll something? <laughs> like we, we oh gotta, no! We, we just gotta make sure. I'll just. And, I'll do. No, that was a plus eight. Every single one of these rolls has been a plus eight. It's a my Yeah. No. This is. Okay, something's up. Something's <laughs> fucking <laughs> up. <laughs> nah, something's, th something's up. not right. <laughs> the, the balance of power has been switched. Good. Good. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, I mean, so the stuff is weird. It's got some weird properties. Um... And as you study it, like, it feels like weird properties in some sense. Um, what would I say? It's definitely not responding like a fungus response. It's actually kind of responding more like a metal response. Oh. Huh. I guess metals don't grow in the way certain crystals do. That is definitely true. It is definitely growing like a fungus. But as a fungus that grows, it like, uh, you know, as you pull it off, it like, like if you have shavings of it, they function like metal shavings. Yeah. That's what I'll tell you with a 10. Huh. Fair enough. Uh, we should... Or if you rolled higher. Yeah, for some weapons made of the stuff. Uh, do I have the sense that it's a disease? A what? A disease. Disease. That's an excellent question. It is definitive. Ooh. For our purposes. Yeah, that's an interesting question. Um. Okay. If we define a disease as a foreign body that has inv invaded into the space of a regular body that's not supposed to be there. Um. By which definition, by the way, a sword stabbed into you would be a disease. Um, then I would say yes, it's a disease. Uh, is it a disease Doesn't... for the purposes of? Uh, is it a disease for the purposes of curing it with five points of my own hands? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um. Uh, e, I think I could do something about this. Do I? Do I have your permission to try? What would you do? Uh, I'll place my hand on your person, wherever you like, uh, for just a moment, and I'll expend some energy, and it won't be very much at all. Oh, it's, I mean, this thing is no bother. I don't, doesn't, doesn't, doesn't affect my mobility, no pain. Okay. Uh, if I mean, you... If, you, if you want to, but, uh, you know, don't, don't put yourself out. Oh, I, I wouldn't be. It's, uh, it's a negligible amount of energy compared to what I have at my disposal. Roll a persuasion check. Okay. Thirty-one. Dang. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> plus seventeen, man. 
that's a nice that's a nice that's a nice point for me so it was me so oh i guess if it's um i guess Hands, uh, to cure one disease. Yeah. Uh, so as you lay your hands on him and cast this spell, uh, just for a second, you suddenly find yourself seeing through his eyes at you. And it's a very weird experience because his eyes don't see color the way that yours do, so everything's a little color graded shifted. Um... Uh, but just meaning, for a second, your mind is 100% connected with his mind. His vision is, uh, like, warmer or cooler compared to mine? Uh, it would be cooler. Oh, interesting, okay. Um, and all of you around watch as this yellow fungus just falls off his spine. Um, and in its place... Underneath it, you see sort of very, very shiny chunks of metal that have to be inside his spine. I just saw through your eyes for a moment. Uh, everything was... Oh, I saw through your eyes. That was... Oh, that is not usually uh, what happens with that. What uh? What was your thought process when you were doing this? Like, what what were you? What was your immediate surface thought? Potentially, hear it. That's it. Yeah, and he he like looks at you and says, "You know, I didn't really even realize it was a disease, but I, I think I do feel a little bit less uh, sluggish. I didn't even realize that I was feeling sluggish." It's not a disease. Um, Just, like hopping back. You, you feel better? That doesn't feel worse? No. No, I feel better. Okay. Um, Zeriel, you hey, want this? Uh... Let me get in on this. Oh, do they do they all have it? Deacons are... I, I mean, we all have our own version of it. They're not all the same. Okay. Uh, how many of you are there again? Well, five of us here. Okay. Six, obviously, total. But, uh, show show of hands. Who who wants it, Khan? Uh, yeah. Immediately, uh, E starts saying, "You know, you should really try this, guys. This is um, <laughs> and the like he and he does like a little. He tries to do a flip, but he actually is not that acrobatic. So he just like sort of lands, <laughs> and sort of giggles. Huh. Good for. We um, might yeah. want to come back later in case there's like." Because I, I don't know if the metal, like, if we're technically curing it, maybe it was placed here for a reason. I, I'm wondering if it was, like, a, um, uh, oh, God, what's the word? An impediment, the, the, like, an intention, intentional impediment. Uh, when, when did this start growing? Uh, D looks around and says, oh, um, well, I, I think it's been growing... Gosh, as long as I can remember. Um, the shiny metal that was underneath the metal that fell out. Um, does that? How is that attached? Um, per se. Oh well, that's just my spine. Oh okay. Could I check? Um, they probably have bones that are broken. Mm -hmm. Or Absolutely. okay. Could I check the inside of any of the bones that are broken? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, are you checking on E? Uh, yeah, the one where it has the shiny. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, inside every single one of his bones is metal. a small core of metal. <laughs> oh, that's fascinating. Um, we can get a... Like, if, if we really wanted to... We could get an extremely hot fire, and we can, like, see this guy is, like, true form. <laughs> so. Oh, uh, what? Oh, no, no, no. 
by uh, burning off the bone. I don't think these guys are human. I think these guys are constructs made around a human remain. Like, and this may actually be, like, if we were to get rid of the um, bone on the outside, then we might be able to see their, like, actual true form. Well, we're not all like that. Oh, you're not all like that? Who's who's not? Well, each of us is, uh, is different. And your guys are made out of different metals, right? I don't know. Hmm. Uh, could I inspect them all and see if there's... Yeah, roll an investigation. Exposed metal. Uh, your experience with the um, fungus was that it was growing out of the bone, almost as if it was like... Hmm. Let me let Jack make this investigation roll before I... Uh, uh, <laughs> 13. It's, we still got the unfortunate luck. Okay. Yeah. Um, yes, they're all very different. Uh, you even get one of them... Um, we look inside a broken bone uh, and um, see nothing there. And they look at me and says, well, it was liquid, but it's gone now. Huh. Um, but they're and... all material. Sorry. <laughs> no, go for it. Um, can I ask the skeletons, um, when Doxies comes, does he take the, the fungus away? He's cleaning them. No, he's using them. He's mining from them. Hey, so far. I, mm, I, I don't think so. And, like, I'm going to give my reasons for that. This is an extremely small sample group, right? If he was mining from them, then I think he would, uh, like, be using a larger, like, you know, more. We don't know how hard he has to make them. It could be really difficult to make. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, is this? We we we've encountered uh we've encountered all of the um, gosh what are you what are they even called the like super rare uh special resources, uh one of them being earth metal, uh is this earth metal? Bone metal. Uh and yes. Bone bone metal. Bone metal. It's bone metal. Oh. I. <laughs> I have no other point of reference except for knowing the name. And having known the name for like a long, long, long time with no context. It's very <laughs> exciting to, to finally... <laughs> it's freaking bone metal. Okay, so he is he is harvesting rare ingredients from these guys. Wait, what, was it on the ship? Uh, was there bone metal on the ship? There was. Um... Zerial, the, the, the stuff in the barrels. The major substances on the ship were bone metal and mirror bright. Oh, mirror bright, that, that I don't remember as well. Is that the mirror shape? bright is. Oh, that, stuff. that was the powder that made things stronger, right? The evocation magic. Mirror bright, uh, earth flood is the thing that will increase your evocation magic. Bone metal increases mind powers, mind magic, mind links. Uh, mirror bright is uh, something that reflects magic. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's fascinating. Okay, yeah. So like, it, it then I I I was wrong. <laughs> like, this is just a very small because you only need a little bit, I guess. So, it's wow. that valuable, really? Yeah. And to think we had barrels of it that got swallowed up by a worm <laughs> and then exploded. Somebody's gonna be out in the desert. They're gonna find like a treasure trove of stuff and be a millionaire. That is actually extraordinarily true. We we had well, I had just been swallowed by a worm. So like, wait, were you I mean, ever swallowed? Uh, inside the ship, yeah. When it was I there, remember you saved me. Like you literally held the worm open that to fucking awesome. get me out. Yeah, like that was insane. Yeah, yeah it was a it was a good fight. Yeah, I've been worm food 
whisper. <laughs> it's like... <sighs> so, yes. But, uh... Oh. Yeah. Uh, definitely gather it, and then we should hold off on possibly curing for now. Um, just because we might be able to... Um, mm -hmm. how, how often does Foxy's usually come? Oh, not that often. I mean, hard for... It's it's kind of hard for us to gauge or understand your understanding of time, because, like, what is often to you? Yeah, that's fair. Um, do you... Does he come regularly? No. Sometimes every hundred years, sometimes every three hundred years. Once he came oh. twice in two weeks. Oh. Okay. When, when did you last see him? Um... Maybe 90, 93 years ago. Okay. Um, because I'm thinking if we take this stuff, Foxy's is going to know that someone was here. And he's not going to be happy that we're stealing from him. Well, I mean, we are you stealing from him? Us. No, but he might think that we are if we take uh, this fungus away, right? If he, If that's what he usually takes when he comes. True, that's what he normally takes when he comes. Does it hurt, by the way, when he does that? No. Oh. Alright, new plan. They said that he shows up every 100 to 300 years. We just wait either 7 years or we wait like an extra 200 years and then he'll show up and we'll ambush him. <laughs> Though, sorry, just to be clear, it doesn't hurt when he does it, but also um, and she like reaches and looks at things and finds a finger and just, like, pulls her finger off and breaks a bone in half. That also doesn't hurt, so I don't really know what pain is. And then just slides it back into her slot. I I, I really want to crack these open like a kinder egg. <laughs> Sorry, like, that's the way you flex up, but... Can I pinch myself and see whether that hurts me? It hurts. It hurts. Could have been undead there. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I think we should probably just seek Foxy's and we can uh, cure, claim, and uh, figure out if we can free these boys a little bit uh, later. I forget what. Bone metal increases the powers of mind magic, mind links. Um, it allows you to see into other people's minds. Um, makes sense why you want it then. Yeah. Uh, also increases psionic powers. We should feed that to the Tarras. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Could it possibly get worse? <laughs> yeah. Hmm. God, I you know honestly, I I wish that waiting the seven years because that that would be fascinating. Can you imagine planning an ambush for seven years? Like it would look like a Macaulay Culkin like Home Alone film. <laughs> like you, you would have contingency plan after contingency plan set up. <laughs> a lovely idea. I don't think this game is set up to handle that in any reasonable fashion. <laughs> Damn, are you saying that like Sorry. a game where Sorry. planning just doesn't work? You can't plan seven years into the future. Yes. What a shame. I'll see you guys in seven years for the time you're <laughs> Yeah, oh, by the way, this campaign is progressing in real time, so I'll see you in seven <laughs> years, too. <laughs> Honestly, I, I fucking hope so. Like, you guys better say hi, like, seven years from now. Like, I want to see how life changed. Wait, is oh in game God. time really. Isn't our in game time really short in comparison? So, haven't we only really been as a party for a few <laughs> months? Yes, that is absolutely true. We, yeah. <laughs> 
I mean, I've had to do some time foolery sometimes, so uh, I think actual the progression has been. Um, I think it's been ten months. Only the horses now. Oh my god! Yeah, I'm they not... perceive time. Yeah. <laughs> I think you've been friends for ten months. I don't really remember that. Ooh. Also, everything's messy. One of my groups, it was the right thing to do to do a time skip, so they are now a year in the future. <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> mm. uh, so what's the plan, guys? What do you want to do? Hang out here forever? Go do something else? Let's kill foxes. Let's kill foxes. foxes. All right. First, Where we gotta find them, though. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, skeleton A looks at you and says, "You're you're you're not going to leave, are you?" Yeah. Do you want to come? What? No, no, no! You die if you leave. Nah. Why's that? It'll be okay. Okay. Well, it was it was nice knowing you. And he died. Oh no! I guess we've been saying that he died for quite some time. Because he I left. Think. Yeah. But he didn't. He's still right. alive. Right. I forgot. So be okay. Alive and kicking. Still not safe Did out there. Did Doxy die if he left? Yeah. Um, that pit that we had seen, does that lead anywhere? Uh, let me check. Reebok says no, but I could be wrong. <laughs> Um, nope. It is a, uh, it is a 20-foot drop. Fair enough. There are plenty of pits that do lead places, though, so always feel free to check. So, uh, you guys are gonna leave the room? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you hop... Oh, go for it. It was nice meeting you. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was, it was nice meeting you, too. Uh, sorry about A, he's always a little bit weird. I'm not weird. I'm definitely not weird. Okay. <laughs> and uh, you guys all leave. And uh, you hop across the pit and you make it back to the room of the dark altar. Uh, there's two doors on the far side. There's, sorry, the door you came in, obviously the hallway, the, the infinite hallway. Uh, that you came in, uh, and then the hallway that you just went through. And then there's two doors on the south side. One of them was a secret door. The other one is um, a normal door. Although I don't think we know about the secret door. I have it highlighted unopened, so um, I presume that you do. Normally I'm pretty good about that. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so we there's an altar in the dark altar, right? Yeah. Huh. Um, and uh, if I remember right, there were people, things praying? Yep. Skeletons, mostly, and some flesh still on their bones. Some weird things with massive claws. Yeah. We have seen those before. Um, and, oh, wait, they're, they're the same. Wait a second. Is one of them the one that I uh, had seen? Like the... My, my rival guy. Your rival guy, remind me. Uh, so, like, back when we were next to the um, Eternals, Immortals, mm -hmm. um, robot people, there mm -hmm. was a dude who was experimenting on people. Right. No. Okay. Um, no. Hmm. Then, what did the altar look like? It looks like it's made of obsidian, and that it is black, uh, and it is very shiny and reflective. Uh, it is so black that it seems blacker than black, because blacker than black is blacker than black. <clears throat> and uh, upon it, there is a well-shaped wooden bowl, uh, which has 
blood in it. Um, no need to roll to identify it. It's blood. Um, and a dagger made of bone, uh, which has a blood groove in it, uh, sort of lying next to it. And um, on the surface itself, carved in ancient Priyani, it says, uh, nothing escapes death. Can I uh, analyze the blood? Yes. What does that mean? I've wanted to use this spell forever, and I haven't had a chance yet. Wow. A spell that's called Analyze Wait, Blood. <laughs> what? Okay, what the... I'm just... I'm fucking shocked. What does it do? What do you get? <laughs> it, uh, I can learn whether I have analyzed blood from this creature before, and when the last time I analyzed it was. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't do it in mingled blood. Um, <laughs> okay, so at first level I gain, um, hang on a second. Yeah, if I cast it at higher levels, I can find out more about it. Okay, what do you want to learn? Um, I'm going to cast it third level. Okay. So I also know the creature who shed the blood's blood type. Like, if they're a monstrosity, if they're undead, or if they're humanoid. Mm -hmm. um, and I know if the blood carries any diseases or poisons in it. This is really freaking freaky. Yeah. You recognize the blood type. And, yeah, you've analyzed this blood before. Celio, someone's collected a bunch of your blood. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. Lovely. Um, does it have any diseases or poisons in it? No. Good. Good to know. <laughs> So, uh, definitely not evil, right? It does read as undead, though. That's really funny. I mean, if I'd cast it at fourth level, it would say if the creature whose blood you used was still alive. And I'm kind of interested to see what that would have said. Oh, I'll use that if you want. No, it's okay. I don't want to use the fourth level spells. Fair enough. No, you, could, you could figure out your own name if you cast the fifth level. <laughs> That's funny. Like, that that would be a shocker if it's just like something completely different from Celia. <laughs> just like Oh god, I, don't. I think there's something my parents need to tell me. <laughs> so, but yeah, de definitely not evil. Can somebody explain why they have like your blood in this evil demon altar? I am so freaked out. I had a quick. <laughs> Fair. Have we seen the bone dagger before? Like, I don't think you have. Okay. Great. There are people sort of. They're not really looking at you. They're kind of like in a religious fervor, just sort of rocking back and forth and praying. Mm -hmm. you. Yeah. And what were these um, things? Mm -hmm. They did get rid of my magic for a while. They did. Now I'm wondering if I transfuse the blood into myself, will I get double magic? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um... I'm gonna sheath the bone dagger and take in that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, it's a bad dagger. It's bad at being a dagger. It's definitely made for religious sacrifices. Cool. <laughs> I, I just think it looks cool. <laughs> well, well Zero, um, roll, do me a favor. Oh boy. <laughs> roll um, an investigation check. Oh, hell yeah. Let's go. Still pretty garbo rolls. True. No, you got to turn. Yeah. Nope. We're good. I'm not giving you anything. Alright, fair. Yeah, but I I still think the dagger looks cool. I am I have a 
Okay, I was going to say I'm an evil person. <laughs> it's like evil dagger. It's like my aesthetic, but I'm I'm a totally normal, neutral person, and cool evil dagger is my aesthetic. Fair enough. If you want to see whether it reacts to evil people, you strike me at the test. <laughs> it'll be like it, it'll be. I'm very confused, and then it will explode. <laughs> like, But yeah, I'll I'll pocket the dagger. But we haven't explored the secret passageway then. Yeah. Is there anything else on the table that suggests what might have been done to the blood? Were they drinking it or mixing it with things? Yeah, why don't you roll an investigation check? Watch me roll the table. <laughs> oh, fourteen. Yeah, Rolled that's a, a plus 11. <laughs> okay, something suspicious. I'm very fond of this. <clears throat> um, okay, so there is a little bit of residue on the altar. Mm-hmm. It's hard. What kind of residue? It was. It's a blood residue. But, like, uh, you can't really tell what it was. It's like almost someone, like, spilled blood on the altar or painted with blood on the altar. What's a fan? What's a fan? Um, the other people in the room, are they looking at us or are they looking specifically away from us? You know, they don't have eyeballs. So they kind of look vaguely in your direction. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> I'm wondering whether I can take their rest. behavior because of your presence in the room. Do you think I can take the blood, guys? Um, okay. I'd, I'd both the or the secret passageway first in case we have to book it. That's a good idea, yeah. Like, and then... Uh, no, because I, I, I think... Um, we did it before we have to book it, right? Yeah, the secret passageway. Like, it... Okay, we're not so we having to... to yeah, like, we, we, we've explored we everything an, before. If we find an exit in the secret passageway, then we can go that way. Yeah. Before we book it. Yeah. Also, my recommendation is to, uh, like, after we take the blood, dropkick the very obviously evil altar, because obsidian is very brittle. So. Like, if this thing is yep. any top weight or off the ground and we'll be able to shatter it into a billion pieces and possibly fuck over toxins. So just imagine the normal size altar and then cereal and a fairly normal sized human just like picking up this massive altar to <laughs> drop kick it. That would be quite <laughs> Yeah. So Alright, should we explore a secret passageway? Yep. Sounds good. So you head over to the secret passageway. Um, this was uh, hidden behind a curtain. It was not that good of a secret passage. Um, oh, but it is locked. There you go. There's a door there. Unlock it. I have the one spell that possibly does something. Hold up, let's see. Uh, oh, beautiful. I have knock. <laughs> I'm going to use knock. Cool. So, what does this look like when you use knock? It doesn't seem usable. You know, honestly, like I, I want to give it like a more straightforward and dramatic flair. I would say that, like, instead of more so ever a spell, I'd say it's a physical thing. Like, I, I have experience in combat and in breaking down like the doors of castles and siege right so like uh, it would more so me being like oh yeah i know where to kick inside the door or inside the place in order to just unjam the thing sure so, I love that. and like that also explains like the very loud sound the knock makes so like yeah. i'm just gonna kick my <laughs> way through it yes you kick the door that's what you're telling me right yeah and but magically so it will pop open it yeah. is not 
helped when placed by something, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Cool. Uh, excellent. Can you roll a dexterity saving throw for me? Yeah, you got it. <laughs> or you triggered the trap. This is a portal. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, yeah. <laughs> That's going to be 34 points of acid damage. As acid oh. just sprays down on top of you. I, I forget if it's acid or poison. I think it's poison. Th those are those are separate things, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, by the way, hmm. since he made a bunch of noise, can I look back at the other skeletons in the room and see if they reacted? I can look at them. Why don't you roll an insight check for me? Sure. Some 21. of them don't seem to notice you, but two of them just casually and sort of subtly look their way in your direction. Also, I like how that literally halved my health. <laughs> do you want do you want some healing potions? I think I've got them. I, I, I would love some healing potions. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I've got some mushrooms and some yeah. really weak healing potions. If you want to down a few, I, I, I'm I'm done for like a whole shiitake bowl, and then I'll take the <laughs> I'll take the extra ones for the bonus hit points. How does it feel, Zeriel, to have the combination? Of... <laughs> it's horrible. Oh, oh, you play I'm like this. You play like this, Asma, for the past two years. <laughs> Slash R, Emily. Um, yeah, that was just Jack, if, if you want to roll. Okay, um, gotcha. The mushroom is 2d10, but you can only have one of those active at a time. Okay. Uh, so if you roll crap, you can eat another one, but yeah. <laughs> they don't uh, stack. Nice. I've got 17 of those um, potions, so you can have as many as you like. Alright, 13 with that will take. And then, uh, I actually do have healing. Oh wait, no, that's a normal healing potion. Uh, is this yeah, it's not very good, but you can have multiple if you want. Okay. <laughs> and that should be good. Yeah, that covers me to full. You don't have that much health. <laughs> I I have sixty total health. I I have liter we have literally become uh, Lyra <laughs> today. <laughs> Everyone's become Lyra today. It's <laughs> finally Karma. <laughs> tr awesome. Truly. <laughs> To deserve this. All right, uh, can we see what's uh, at the? The stone hallway continues straight ahead of you. Okay. Um, should we follow it and, or just go back, take the blood, kick the altar? Up to you guys. Uh, well, no I, main I don't think oh, it's right. him. Oh, wait. You don't think he's here? Him. Well, I don't know. Well, 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 I guess those are different statements, but... Yeah, because we can always just run back into the room and then do everything. Like, we'll, we'll dash the opposite way towards BC, B, F, them, them, them guys, so... Um, I, I think okay, yeah. Fun. Because, like, at the end of the day, like, we, we can literally just, uh, well, I can do this. We could just go here, drop kick the altar, go back, and then use the pit as some sort of, uh, tactical, you know? Because we have a choke point here, too. Yeah, so we'll, we'll, we're gonna have to be uh, careful with it, but should be okay. All right, uh, let's let's go down the hallway and see if he's here. So, uh, sorry, so you're going down the secret passage. Mm -hmm. Okay. You walk down the hallway, and suddenly it broadens out into a large room. This room is probably fifty feet by fifty feet. Um, and 
in it, there are several people enclosed in some sort of glass. And they seem still and unmoving. There's six of them. And they're all wearing the same... They're all very different people. Different species, different everything. Uh, but they're all wearing the same black robes. Oh, I don't like that. Do we recognize any of them? You would not. Um, I'm assuming it's a religious thing, but I want to see if they look anything like robes I might have seen before from like a wizarding school or something, just mm. to check. Yeah, absolutely. Um, no. They look like robes that you would see on a religious person. Great. You're totally right. Trust yourself. <laughs> is, is it bad that my first instinct for literally anything here is to then just drop it again? <laughs> like, like, I feel like if we topple these, it'd be like, yeah, like I, I have the true barbarian spirit today. <laughs> Do they know that we're here? They seem totally still. Like, not even are they not moving, but they look frozen. We really don't like that. Mm, absolutely. Uh, you sense what when you do that? Uh, Fiend's fate. Uh, let me check. Fiend's fate undead, right? Yeah. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah uh, two of them are undead. Uh, one of them is a fiend. Uh, fiend sorry, though. Celestial yeah. and Fiend and Undead. Okay. Uh, yeah, two of them are undead. One of them is a fiend. Um, even though they all look humanoid. I relay that uh, quietly. Yeah. Um, does one of us have, like, uh, I forget what it's called. Is it, like, Lure? The thing that, like, will uh, hoist people up in the ceiling? It's a trap. Yeah. Snare? Snare, yeah. Oh, I do have snare, but it takes ages to set up. <laughs> we used it on Sam. Yeah. Like, not intentionally, was... but... Um, to be fair, though, if they're not moving, I could yeah. set it up. That, that's, that's, that's what I'm it's thinking. It's a radius, though. Okay. <laughs> and I need 25 feet of rope for each one. Hmm. Okay, then I think... Our best bet is we set up one just at this like hallway choke point, right? Like, because I think again the. Uh... Oh, there we go. Okay, but this? if they all come at us at once, one of them will get hoisted up onto the ceiling, but we'll still have the rest of them coming at us. Oh yeah, for sure. Like, <laughs> but I mean, it at least might help some. I I'm not sure. Like, it, it we can skip it. Again. Uh, I, I think a reasonable scenario is that they are uh, out of the initiative for, or not out of the initiative, but uh, taken out of the action economy for one turn, and then they deal with it pretty much immediately. Actually, no, 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 I may have something better. Um, Lyra, do you have Garope? Do I have what, sorry? Uh, Garope wire. I don't. Sure. Yeah, she could have something like that. Okay. Um, yeah, if, if we have some garrote wire, that is a five foot wide hallway, right? Mm -hmm. uh, no, 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 no. Uh, oh. These hallways are substantially wider than that. Um, oh, okay. Squares on this map are 40 feet, so that's like a 20 foot wide hallway. Oh, shit. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, then we'd be way more garrote than <laughs> what we'd have. Um, yeah, because I, I was thinking, like, we could make a clothesline, like, mm. neck height, and then place a coin to mark it. So. I wonder if that would affect it. it oh, I, God. Yeah. 
<laughs> hey, you know, they, they could Scooby-Doo into that. Heads popping <laughs> off one after the other. <laughs> God, that's a funny visual. <laughs> yeah, alright, I think we just have to go through this. Don't touch anything, though. I, I, I would say. But yeah. It has a vibe of, like, a museum. Yeah. Are they waxed? <laughs> are they oh. waxed? Is that your question? Yeah, like a wax work. Are you are you reaching out to touch them? No. Uh, <laughs> definitely not, no. And I definitely told everybody that two are un undead and one is a fiend. Yeah, they don't seem to be waxed. You could be wrong. You'd have to touch them to know, but they don't seem to be waxed. We we should just make our way through. <laughs> we should treat it like the museum it is and not touch anything. <laughs> that oh yeah yeah I'm on board with that. Okay, who's uh, leading this expedition? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're a passenger, Dude, don't I? Uh, not high. It's ten nine. Cool, make a dexterity saving throw as you fall into a pit trap. Damn. Ah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, it's ten. It's ten. Oh, what is going on today? It is a 40-foot pit trap. Okay. So you take nine points of damage. I'm at the bottom of the 40-foot trap? Yes. <sighs> That's so unideal. Let's deal with this quickly. Please. <laughs> Um, do we have 40 feet of rope? Yeah. Rope comes in increments of 50 feet. You probably have 40 feet of rope. Oh, yeah. Right. You drop a rope down and, and get Tiss back out. See, Tiss, how heavy are you? The much cooler option, right? It, like, this is completely, like, you, it's hard to do, obviously, but, like, the cooler option is to have him misty step up the fucking 20 feet Ooh, as yeah. for me to drop down like to literally jump down into the pit as a poker grab him and then misty step the other 20 feet <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, if you want to go for it i will allow it it's just that there's a risk of failure and if you fail oh, people of course, will fall but like you also like lose the two spells yeah. <laughs> and like it is the coolest option by far like don't get me wrong that's the, that's why I wanted to say it, but like, yeah. Like uh, he's trying to get someone up there as well. Yeah. So extra. Just to continue to lead the expedition. Yeah, yeah. Um. Oh, my weight is two thirty six, and I believe that's without armor. <laughs> nice. So the whole rest of the party armor. gets together and teamwork pulls you up. And the only reason they can do that is because uh, uh, Zeriel quickly creates a pulley system. Um, <laughs> <laughs> cool, Tiss, you want to continue to lead the party? I can lead the party. I've got better perception than you have. Yeah, uh, you do. You're also so, so, so much fewer hit points. Yeah, I have a lot more hit points than the other two, though. <laughs> that's fair. That's okay. Yeah, that's not too bad. And then I can lay on hands whenever it happens. Um, what do you have? Uh, what do I have? Uh, total is two o three now. I have sixty. <laughs> I got a rock. <laughs> the thing that's, that's, that that uh, Tiss has, which is is really quite good, is an armor class of twenty. Yeah. So it's something yeah. that's actually really good too. With I think 150 hit points and an AC of 19. Jeez, okay, I thought it was 18. <laughs> I got that 23. Hell yeah. Yep, I'm but very no not <laughs> Yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, Sully is leading. Is that what's happening? And Swap? Yeah, I've got a passive perception of 18, so I should be able to see any traps like that. Maybe. You continue down the dark hallway, and Sully. As you do, you start to hear something. A familiar oh. sound that you dislike immensely. The sound of running water. <laughs> oh, 
pick, huh? Make it okay. to the end of the hallway. And there, the roof, the floor, everything just drops out. And you look down from your perspective. And you are directly over the river. Oh. The river of dark water. Next to your feet, you see that there are several buckets oh, along dude. long pieces of rope that could be used to lower the buckets down to pick up water without having to go down. Huh. I, <laughs> so the hallway was right next to us, right? Can we see the exit of the other hallway? Yeah. It's about 40 feet over. Oh. Hey, uh, Celia, you got stone shield, right? Yeah. It's we, so could, well. we could go the opposite way in the other hallway that was supposedly infinite. We could see just how infinite it really is. Well, the infinite hallway is, um, just to be clear, uh -huh. nothing. That's the infinite hallway. Oh, okay. So wait, th this is, we just haven't explored. <laughs> yep. Okay. Uh, well, to be fair, we could surprise them too. Yeah. Like, cause right. he, here's what I'm thinking. Like, he's he's thinking that people are coming from here, right? Like, he's not thinking people are coming from like a fifty foot drop cavern here. So any of the traps that he has are going to be over here. You know? So we're walking through them backwards. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna get the drop on them. Lovely. <laughs> it's forty feet over. Yep. So I'm gonna have to use this eight times to get through the forty feet. What? Oh damn. Okay. So it's probably not the right way of getting across there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What else do we? I I have phase step, so I can just get across. Or wait, no, I let's do a range on it. We dropped someone in by like held by rope. We lower them like forty feet, and then we just swing them. That's not. I mean, that's that's actually a good idea, kind of. Like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I got phase step, so I I could be okay. Well, why don't we um? Yeah, uh, I take a ten foot jump. <laughs> why don't we consider how to get across while we take our break? Yeah. I need water. <laughs> Fair enough.
everyone, welcome back to Sagas of the Shinmo Ring Sea, the Hidden Tomb of Akaru. Uh, this is my wonderful people here, as always, at the top of the second part of the show. I'd like to take a moment to encourage you, yes, you, to think about your position in the world, who you are, uh, and how you relate to the world, where you are situated within it, and uh, encourage you to think about, you know, maybe giving back to the world in some way. I don't know your life, I don't know who you are, I don't know... I can't even predict, uh, and I wouldn't even try. But um, whoever you are, I'm sure that there's something that you can do to help someone uh, alleviate some sort of suffering. Sometimes that's a kind word. Sometimes that's commissioning an artist. Sometimes that's really just um, being present, really listening to someone who's going through something. That's all it is, and I would encourage you to find a way to do that. Also, this is not the only show on our channel. We have another show on this channel. It meets on Sundays. I don't remember if we're back this Sunday or not. I think we might be. Not. Be back this Sunday. Scheduling. What does it say? Check scheduling. Okay, we are back on the 16th. So we're not back yet this Sunday. But we're coming back soon with the, with the other show. And uh, that'll be that. And that'll be fun. And that'll be the good stuff. And uh, we'll see you then there then. Back to this show. So, there you all, having climbed through this uh, tunnel uh, and found a back entrance in the walls uh, to a, another part of this uh, Akrutian tomb. That's interesting. Um, and you guys want to sneak through the back, I think. That's the plan, I heard, at least. Uh, do we have a way across this 40-foot divide across the stone wall? Did anyone learn the spell Spider Climb, for example? Briefly considered it. <laughs> well, this is the circumstance where it would be most useful. I could fly. This is true. Um, fly is a concentration spell, right? Yep. So I could cast it on one person, and then once they're across, cast it on the next person. Or... 60 feet per round. Or. 10 feet a second. Just. Sell you. Or, or cast it on one person and everyone brings. Everyone holds on to them. There you go. Or. They could take multiple trips. Or they could take That's multiple true. trips. Because it lasts an hour. Just. I know what it's like to be inside the room thinking, well, I can cast fly, and fly makes one person fly, and I've got four people, so I guess I need to cast it four times. But it turns out you don't. <laughs> you could just cast that dungeons. Was, I was just a step too far, but yeah. my brain is tired. Is that coffee or tea? Like tea. Should be coffee ready for me. See, I could Wait, abuse right. physics and cast Featherfall and Expeditious Retreat in order to swing myself like a Beyblade on a string. <laughs> hey, a if you want to do it, I'm not against it. <laughs> I, I genuinely wonder how that works because you I really want to fall today, don't you? Just well, somehow you no, can cause, find a way to fall. Because think about it: if you're doubling your speed, right, like then you're going to be able to like move fast enough to get centrifugal force, right? And then if you are do you using, think that's actually true? Do you think like if you could, if you move twice as fast as you moved, would you get mm -hmm. centrifugal force? Like a, uh, a, enough, a significant enough amount of centrifugal force to enable you. Right, but that's where the feather fall comes in because it slows your rate of descent. Therefore, no, it doesn't. It doesn't? No, it just means it doesn't hurt. You fall 60 feet per round. Oh, okay. Which is interesting. Yeah, so like that's 10 feet a second, but I don't know. That, the terminal velocity. I guess that's how magic works, but that doesn't make any sense at all. Why, why wouldn't you fall slower? Yeah. I would you fall slower? <laughs> oh, I guess I guess feathers. No, 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 no. Feather will fall at the same rate as a bowling ball, assuming there is no external force operating on it. In a vacuum, though, right? <laughs> assuming yeah, so there's maybe... no external force operating on it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, Matt, these are the questions you need to know as a DM. What is the airspeed resistance that feather fall applies to the human body? It applies no airspeed resistance. 
So bizarre. I'm fighting you a just new DM. Land lightly. Actually, yeah, I guess it does make sense. Like you both feather falls the same rate. Okay, but doesn't don't it? give me that much credit, Marcus. I love no, you. no, but the like, the spell. On. This the... is freaking D and D magic. You wanted to make sense? I'm just telling you what the rules are. No, this this thinking about it, the spell the spell's name is not that contradictory. I thought it was, but a feather falling that fast, I guess, doesn't make the same impact. Yeah. See, like, I I think the real amazing part is that we're like completely foregoing the fact that the entire purpose of this discussion is to say that no you cannot just ride on walls like you are using a rope i mean you can you just need to cast a different bizarre magical spell spider fly because spiders can just climb on walls Nah, that's that's too easy. I need to play with the physics of D and D. Feel free, man. That's what I'm here for—to entertain your physical life. You can use levitate, hang onto a wall, and just pull yourself along. That's, that's true too. Works. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Perhaps that's the ticket. I I think that may be the ticket. That mm. uh. Well, then you'd have no, to have. Yeah. Fly something's... would be better because unless you jumped and then cast levitate. You would be at the same height nah. as this floor would be, which means that whoever's riding along with you would then have to somehow get from your ankles or wherever they're holding on to to the ledge. Oh which no! Which sounds we're, like we're not a talking about ticket. multiple people. I'm thinking like the human slingshot using like a oh rope. My gosh. <laughs> right it's a physics thing like if you've ever played spider-man think spider-man but like amazing so and no matt really spider climb and spider-man really the amazing spider-man right <laughs> i cannot think of spider-man but amazing because spider-man is already amazing yeah but I, like he's also spectacular you also said spider climb, and I know spider climb's the answer, but I guarantee you I will find a way that does not use spider climb. And There's as a what... lot of answers. Spider climb is an answer, not like not like the answer. The answer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. clears throat> the answer. Anyways, we should get across the gap sometime this week. So like let's go. <laughs> My rambling. I think I should just have a magic spell. missile and everyone Last can just go right on to a missile. Is that what you say? I'm that's being a... sarcastic. Well, Sorry. honestly, that's not a bad... Like, if you had a lasso... Yes, it then... is. Well, no, because if you had a lasso... That's a cool idea, Jack. It's a terrible what? idea. No, a magic grappling lasso. I guarantee there's something like that, right? That allows you to grab magical things, right? And like, it's a... That book series by Brandon Sanderson never read it <laughs> like, but like yeah imagine that you lasso the missile and then if you had like extending things you could just fly places that you want like that'd be cool that yeah, would be very cool could... you don't have a spell like that <laughs> what were you gonna say lara uh, if we push a few people not saying any names down the pit there are fewer to take across <laughs> <laughs> you're right we should push Celia down the pit <laughs> I've got it. I've got it. Someone needs to cast Cause Fear, and other people have to fail their saves so that they're so frightened that they just turn around and run out across the pit without noticing that there's no ground beneath them, like cartoon models. That is a good point. It could Assuming also be that, an Indiana Jones. That then end up on the other side of the pit rather than adjacent to our. This is adjacent true. to where we are. So we need to have like a. Then you'd have to do it on the other side and come back. Um, Maybe take flight. Yeah, good point. Well, what if I use light to shine a bridge of light across the gap and we'll walk on that? What if I turn off the flashlight? Oh, damn, you got me. (laughs) If you used sunlight, then at least the dark water wouldn't be dark water anymore. So when I inevitably fall, I won't die. It would be light water, and then it would burn me to death. <laughs> Great idea, let's go. Uh, Alright. So we get across the crap, I'm assuming. Okay, shall I cast fly on Tiss, and then Tiss can carry us one by one? 
I, I find it hilarious that like Tish is just flying like a bird. Like he is a gargantuan creature compared to like Big many bird. of us in <laughs> heavy armor. And he is just like levitating and just carrying us. Well, this is why Tiss is really the matters blood is the air the 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 blood blood blood. Blood. And then I had to carry Tiss. Oh, of an unladen Tiss, unfortunately. <laughs> and, like a, a fucking burrow. I kind of am getting to that point in pack animal level. Um, yeah, I can do that then. I could probably carry multiple people, I would hope. You are so much stronger than a pack animal. <laughs> Sorry. You think so? Oh, actually, yeah, that, that does. I think track. a mule yeah. has a 14 strength disc. Oh, wow. Right. Yeah. Stronger yeah. than a pack animal? Let, let, let's see, am I right? Am I right? Yeah, mule has a 14 strength disc. Okay. I have a 15. I'm better. See? I have a 15. Hell See? Yeah. Oh, but there are large animals I... for the purpose of determining their carrying capacity. So, never mind. Tiss, what's your carrying capacity? Yeah, let's let's see what we got. Wait, strength nineteen. You should. Oh, strength twenty nine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was like, like I remember something there was a nine right. in there somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I missed it. I missed ten. Uh, okay. <laughs> Your strength store determines the amount you can lift and carry. Your carrying capacity is your strength score multiplied by 15. <laughs> That's so true. Okay, so 145. What's the measure, though? Like, that many pounds, or...? Mm -hmm. 435, I want to say? Hell yeah. Wait, how much? Hey, you, you could carry a wagon, dude. Okay, so wait, how much, what, what's your strength? Uh, right now it's 29. Okay. So you can carry 435, and Shit. a can carry 420. Uh, blaze it. But, uh, yeah, okay. I could take everyone, right? <laughs> Is that true? No? I, th I think so. so. Well, no, but you have to carry your own weight, too. Right, or you have to carry your own weight uh, uh, as well. So, uh, okay, so it's it's... Cut down by like a hundred or so, probably. Yeah. I'm sure you don't drop anyone. Do you just want to do two trips? <laughs> yeah, I can do two trips. Okay. Wrap so... on to my head, Celia. I won't drop you. We'll go together. <laughs> so, let's see. So, Tiss is going to... Uh, sorry, Cecilia, you're going to cast Fly on Tiss? Yeah. Okay, Tiss, who are you bringing over first? I didn't. Right, so I'll take them first. Oh, I'm offended. Okay. I don't know, I do have like 18 bottles of blood. <laughs> that is true. That is true. And he has one of yours. One of my... Nah, of I'm the bad guy. Oh, yeah, almost certainly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you drop off Lyra, and you drop off Celia, and you two, you are on like this cliff ledge, uh, and beyond you, there's a stone hallway that seems to lead into what could only be called a cavern filled with crystals and books and a library. Ooh, a library. I like libraries. <laughs> What do you want to do? Can I gently touch a book and see whether I can take it out without anything bad happening? Do you start walking into the library? I'll wait until the others are back, <laughs> actually. Okay. Tiss returns with uh, Zira. Tiss, you still have flight. You can keep it until... I lose my concentration or spirit whatever. Um, I... Okay, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not sure what I'll use it on, but... Just to, like, drop from yeah, the sky 60 just feet. Just hover and... over the ground faster, so... True that. So, you want to reach out and touch a book? You want to head into the library? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So you head into the library. And you immediately... 
hear growling. Oh, gosh. Okay. Can I tell where it's coming from? Can I see anything? Uh, yeah, what's your passive perception? 18. Okay. Let me check. That sounds good. Yeah, 18. I think this may be Tess. Well, growling. Well, then. <laughs> well, unfortunately, no. <laughs> that would be funny. Um, yeah, no, like, he's got speech with animals and all that stuff. Like, he is <laughs> a man of nature. It's, uh... Yeah, you're a straight Disney princess, dude. Like, <laughs> hell yeah. Just so terrifying and violent. Like a Disney princess. Uh, princess. Um, wait, do I hear how a Disney princess would actually react in the real world? Yeah, probably, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, I do. Oh, yeah, as part of my um, Oath of the Ancient spell list. Yeah. Um, okay, let's see what we got here. Hold on one second. Yeah. Um, so, you hear growling. And... You see that in this large room, there are, like, these crystals that are growing in the corners of this room. And, um, between the books and the library, you see something that looks a lot like, what would you call it? Uh, probably like a lizard head? looking at you it's uh... long neck bends around the back of a bookcase you just see the head as you reach out to tuck a book and it uh, it growls at you it's Seth where's Ocelot <laughs> that's Lashoska yeah, uh, Dark Souls. It seems, like, but everybody calls him Seth because he's a nerd. Uh, he's a nerd dragon. So, uh, fucking yeah. Seth the Scaleless. Yeah. Wait, who is Ocelot in Dark Souls? Dark Souls oh, really? I oh, okay. I I must not be there yet. Um, but it's easy to miss too. Sort of. Probably the only one. Um. So this head looks at you, this lizard head with this long neck that bends around the back of the library looks at you and growls. Uh, yeah, we're, we're not taking any books, we were just looking, didn't know they were spoken for. Uh, do do you speak uh, speck in common? It doesn't seem to respond. Do you know what I'd like I, to eat? I could I could ask it. Um, I'll I'll burn a first level slot to do speak with animals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me pull the text of speak with animals for one second. Sure. Mm -hmm. Spend that spell slot. Where is it? Oh, quite a few expended. Cool. It, um... Doesn't work. Um, and I think you realize that as its head pulls up slowly, looking down at you, till it is above the bookcase, and then you see a second head pull up from around another bookcase, and a third, and a fourth, and a fifth. All connected Great. to one body. I guess like a snake would be serpentine, but also reptilian. Yes. And uh, with that, um, just for the fun of it, you know, can I have everyone roll initiative? <laughs>
So we have got a weapon. And Tiss got a 15. So we have gets a 7. Tiss, oh, Tiss already did get a 15. And Lyra got a natural 20. Guys. Yeehaw. Something, I'm definitely something wrong. Lyra. <laughs> Are you cheating? I don't know. How, like, if I knew how to, trust me, I would have done it all. Did your holiday and break a break involve invoking a curse upon us? <laughs> or finding uh, a genie? <laughs> no. Lyra, believe it or not, it's your turn. Oh dear. Um. Hmm. Matt finds um, this guy. I don't want to attack it. That's certainly between you and your god. What do you want to do instead? Pardon? What do you want to do instead? Uh, can I use Mage Hand to try and reach out to one of the heads? Sure. Oh. But with the um, sort of, what's it called? Your palm facing out, so that it's less threatening, I guess. Sure, yeah, absolutely. So you're just gonna, like, give it whatever opportunity it wants, and you're gonna try and, like, you're trying to, like, soothe it. Yeah. Cool. Good for you. I'm very glad that you're trying to do this. Uh, does a 30 hit you? Yeah. Cool. One of the heads responds to your attempts at placating it with biting you for 12 damage. That's just rude. You know... The thing had crossed my mind. Hmm. <laughs> Is that your turn? Yeah, I guess I'll... Yeah, yeah. Serial, this thing has just ripped into Lyra. What do you want to do? Um, where is the body? Hmm. It's hard to see from here. There's all these bookcases in the way. You gonna go looking for it? Yeah, I I think. Uh, What's your movement speed? Let's see, uh, thirty feet. But I can also expend a um, expeditious and or a uh, space step. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, whatever. Yeah, well, which, whichever you prefer. Um, but that'll certainly get you close enough to see the body. It's guarding, it seems to be guarding from a door, it seems to be blocking a doorway. Okay. Um, so let's see what's better. This is one action. Let's see. Oh wait, that's a four. Okay, so yeah, I'm just going to be using my face step. Mm -hmm. um, and then I still have attacks. So, Ooh, pardon. Attack in the body. <laughs> and then let's see. Uh, what was it? It was that I'm very glad that I have my uh, how to play for dummies. Yeah, <laughs> it's so great. Oh yeah, there you go. Okay, it's with the tentacle, the shadow blade, and two rapiers. Oof, a God. lot. Yeah, yeah. No. Um, and you're attacking the body, correct? Yeah, and then I'll oh, drop an action surge too. Um, wow. Okay. Yeah, we're we're just gonna go for it. We're going Good. full in. Do the thing. Uh, one, two, three, four, and then shadow blade. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then rapier. One, two, three, four. <laughs> My God. Okay, let's see. Did you kill this creature in one turn? Let's find out. Um, <laughs> that would be hilarious if it did. I don't think so, but it's possible. Okay, uh, 25 plus... Here's my 11 attacks. Good luck to you. <laughs> plus 4, plus 14, plus 34. How do you get in 34? D12 plus. Why is it a D12 on your tentacle? Hmm? 
Um, oh, oh, those are not, oh, sorry, that's totally right. Yeah. Okay. The rip the shield. I might actually just switch off to using a uh, shield in uh, my offhand at some point. It's not the worst idea. Plus nine. Both my ten. I didn't hit with that one. I missed. Oh no. Plus seven. Plus. 273 damage. Wait, wait, what? 273 damage. So in one turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, here's the issue with that is I didn't use hex. So like, how did like if I if I had the bonus action, which I do not because of the thing, right? Yep. Um, I could have added a d6 to every single one of those 14. Oh yep. my god. Um, okay, cool. What am I going to do? I'm going to respond with legendary action, because I can. Uh, and my response is going to be to stomp across the place, knocking everything over, uh, and trampling over everyone. Um, so let's talk about positioning for a second, so that it makes a degree of sense. Uh, Zeriel, you came up and started attacking my body. Is that correct? Cool. Um, Lyra, you tried to placate me with your magical thing, so you were in my way. Tiss is in the room, and uh, but sort of towards the back. Uh, and Sally, you are what triggered this encounter, so you are deep in the room on some level. Cool. Uh, so this is going to be really rough for you guys. I'm going to trample a bunch of you. Uh, Zero, you are right next to me, right? Cool. Yes, sir. So I get to trample you and make an attack uh, for every... 10 feet that I drag you as I am trampling you. And I get to move phase. So I'm going to make five attacks against Zerial right now. Okay. Zerial. I think only one of those hits, right? 26? None of them do, because I'm going to use a uh, shield. Good call. Okay, Lyra, you are going to get three attacks from me. Uh, 29, 16, 17. Is it? Uh, two of them hit. Two of them hit. Okay, so that'll be. Uh, yeah. Wait, I'm I'm guessing if it's if it matches our armor class, it hits. Yep. Yeah. Then two of them. Uh, so that'll be thirty six points of damage to you. Uh... And then let's see. Uh, Celia, you're getting three hits. As I trample across the room. That's a 28, a miss, and a 31. Both those hit? Uh, yeah, two of those hit. Mm -hmm. Even if I use shield. 14, so probably 30 different. damage. And then Tiss, I'm getting one attack against you. For a miss. Still, not bad for a legendary action. I'm now on the other side of the room. Tiss, that makes it your turn. Also, books have been flying everywhere. Crystals have been cracking. I would like to try something unrelated to... Um, almost entirely unrelated to this. Um, of I'd like to drip... Uh, or or I'd, I'd like to put an amount of the bone metal that I picked up uh, mm -hmm. in my palm uh, around the hilt of my longsword. Uh, and then I'd like to cast Searing Smite. And then I would like to attack. Awesome. Do it. Okay. Um, let me pull up Searing Smite there. Okay. Uh, so, two longsword attacks coming up down the pipeline. Mm -hmm. That hits. Anything happen? Um, so, you, you, you are, sorry, are you releasing the Searing Smite? Uh, sorry, releasing it? Yeah, you cast Searing Smite, and then, like, it empowers your your sword, and then, like, when you hit something, you can release it to uh, actually do the extra damage or whatever it is. Oh, so yes, yes, yeah. So I'll, I'll let it run its natural force and just expend once the fire damage is dealt, uh, which I'll roll perfect. for now. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, who boy, suddenly, 
I need you to roll an intelligence saving throw. Oh, okay. Um, intelligence. Uh, it's a seven. Oh my gosh. Uh, okay. This is gonna suck for you right now. I bet. <laughs> Your mind swaps into this body. You suddenly feel yourself inside the Hydra. And, um... Wow, you feel like you have been stabbed all over. Every piece of you has been stabbed by that tricksy elf guy. That's the only thought that's going through your mind. Kill the tricksy elf guy. Kill him good. Trample him, eat him, devour him. I, I'm, I'm imagining I lost some intelligence in this swap. Oh no. Oh, oh, di oh, lost intelligence. Oh yeah, when you become him, yes, absolutely you do. It doesn't last long, but you do get psychic damage based on the amount of damage this creature has taken. Tis, uh, body, or the Tis's Hydra? body is taking this damage. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, so, how much? Uh, let's see. The rules I have here are uh, if the creature has taken... It doesn't matter. I'm not going to even bother reading this whole blah, 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 blah. Okay. Uh, that's going to be 140 points of psychic damage to you. <laughs> okay. Taken. Um, and uh, let's see. Uh, you would also recognize that the creature has an intelligence of four uh, and is not a beast. It's a monstrosity, so you can't communicate with it. It's... Is that your turn? Oh, you get a second attack if you want to make a second attack. Uh, am I back in my body? Yep. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I'll take a second attack. Go for it. Uh, okay, let's see here. 26 solid hits for another 18 points of damage. I... Uh, 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 I'll, I'll add a divine, divine Smite in there. Feel free. Third level. Uh, it's 5d8. Mm-hmm. Another 17. Another 17 points of damage. Screams, I was in its body, it hates Zerial, it wants to kill him. I don't know what else is useful for that. Uh, great. Celia, that makes it your turn. Let's make it want to kill me instead. Um, I'm going to cast Disintegrate on it. Awesome. I um, and then I'm also going to augment it. With some bottles of blood. Okay. Um, I'm gonna it. use. Okay. You failed. Yes. Okay, good. Just checking. Um, I'm gonna use six bottles of blood, so I add seventy. Okay, so you're gonna add seventy damage. Ten d six plus one hundred and ten. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Roll the damage. If this succeeds, I'm going to have a really interesting question. So that is um, 143 damage. Yeah, and I'm also going to try and do siphon. Okay. Which what means I might get some. Um, I might get some bad health back. Okay. Uh, is it a con save? Yeah. For me. Okay. Let's see what we do. Twenty. Yeah. My my DC is nineteen. Okay. Um. Well, how do you want to do this? That did it. Oh yeah. What? Um. Cool. I had a wow. hundred four hit points left, so you could have rolled all ones, and it would have done it <laughs> when you augmented it that much. So. There you go. Yeah, I was just really panicking. It's really big. Yeah, it is um, really big. And it's got some cool moves, but didn't get to use any of them because it's dead. It's just totally dead. <laughs> so you fry this thing, and it just. Yeah. Uh, 
Tis, I think, like, a part of your mind is still, like, feeling that. What does it feel like to be disintegrated? Papa a beast? To a friend. Yeah. <laughs> Um, for for a beast, I think it's like primordial. It's like the rawest um, experience of something that is uh, uh, like elemental to them. Um, yeah. It's frightening. It's overpowering, and such that it overpowers uh, its very existence. That seems profound. I love it. Sorry. This thing is dead and gone. Zero, you said you had a question. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so it's not a dragon, right? It's a hydra. No. Yes, it is a monstrosity. Okay. Um, yeah, because I was going to say, disintegrate on a dragon. I was reading it, and it was like anything except for magical items uh, will disintegrate, right? Mm -hmm. And so, like, a dragon's scales are technically, like, magical items, so, like... No, they are not. Oh, they're not? Okay. Because I was thinking it would, like, just deflate like a balloon. <laughs> it would just That's kinda, funny. Yeah, just kind of go... I think it's like, the internal organs. Yeah, love... like, everything on the inside, like, all the meat, but, like, the scales are still left because it's obviously, like... Like a snake jelly. Uh, yeah, like a snake jelly. Oh, Terrifying. God. That would be so cool. I mean, to be fair, like, if you manage to kill a dragon using Disintegrate, I think you burn the, <laughs> the uh... <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Uh, that, that's it. I just Either way, though. Dragon. Yeah. Either way, though. Um, you, this thing deflates. This room, with its one trample across the room, you know, it knocked bookcases, it shattered crystals, it trampled people just like absolutely decimating this room making a huge amount of noise and the doors swing open and you see a person tall and slender eight feet wearing a green hood sort of an aqua green hood and with green flame spouting out of its eyes and a red gem embedded right here in its bony forehead and Thoxes the lich looks at you all and says you killed my guard dog oh shit yeah Yes, you have become quite the thorn in my side. Hmm. A lot. Oh, Christ. Uh, I'm doing 85 out of my 90 remaining. Okay. I'll see if I can distract him with a very unexpected question. Ask it. What can we do for you? Thoughts. <laughs> You've seen what we're capable of. This is our resume. Your resume is killing things that I have created, destroying projects that I have been spending generations of your lifetimes on. Forgive and me if, if we I... can do that. Think about how much more we can do for you. You think it has holes in it. You think my security network has holes in it? Well, we're here. Are you so incredibly stupid about how powerful you are? Rarely three people in a generation 
with the amount of strength that each of you have. I, it's, it's. Wait, wait, you're gonna cast Death Ward on him? Mm. What? Um, I. Yeah, you're just casting. Okay, yeah, then I'm going to immediately respond by invoking a curse upon you. So I need you to make a con save. So I hope these roll high this time. Okay, it's 27. I him casting it. Legendary it, action. It may indeed. And my, a, my spell save DC is 23. So you are cursed. I, I got 27. A plus five oh. from my uh, aura. Never mind aura. then. You are not cursed. My spell save DC is not 27. It is 23, which is scary and impressive, but it's not 27. Too high. And too high, frankly. Um, at that point, uh, guys, I think I want to stop because I'm pretty sure this fight's going to take uh, longer than 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Like, because like, I was going to say, like, perhaps we may have a way to... Uh like intimidate him into finding out what he's doing because i think like yeah maybe he was just trying to whip up our ass but <laughs> who knows yeah i mean i'm i it's possible i think that um i don't think that's the way this this fight is gonna go but it's possible yeah. um yeah. but i think we'll call it a day there i know it's slightly early but uh i want to have enough time for the fight for the fight to be taken seriously um, so we will we will jump back in next week, guys. Wow, cool, very fun. Okay, well, everyone, thank you so much for watching. Go live good and happy lives. Take care of yourself. Take care of the people in your life. Uh, thank you, anyone who's hanging out. Hope you're having a good time. Um, polymorphism. I don't know who uh, Jack. I don't know who Insane Dragon is, but <laughs> they are suggesting that I fireball you. And they are also suggesting that I polymorph you into a furry cat boy. Honestly, fair, fair enough. Like my response you, is, Fireball is too good for you. Oh yeah, absolutely. I've been disintegrated once, so like I, I think. Well, okay, disintegrated once, eaten by a worm twice. Um, yeah. See. Uh, <sighs> just for the record, and I'm going to warn everyone here about this right now. Thoxy's is backed into a corner. You guys are very powerful, and Thoxies is um, scared of you. Uh, <laughs> and oh. as a result, will be fighting absolutely to kill you. There is no, like, he's not going to be shooting to knock people out or anything like that. He wants to kill you. So, um, bear that in mind. <laughs> Honestly, appreciate the death boy. <laughs> Now that I think about it, and I think about the fact that I have 56 or 59 hit points at level 19. We'll see what happens. And, uh, well, with that, guys, go live good and happy lives. Take care of yourselves, and never forget the most important advice that I can offer you. Don't forget to call your cat and feed your mom. Bye, everyone. <laughs>